is up you guys welcome back to another one if you are new to the channel i am gold pony i do new car truck suv reviews on youtube and today we are in the brand new 2024 dodge durango courtesy of faulkner dodge jeep ram in mechanicsburg pa for more information on their inventory please feel free to check out the link in the description box below so today we're in this one because this is dodge's three row family hauler suv and there is actually some new safety for the 2024 model year as well which is very important so ultimately in this video we will be testing out and going over everything about this one from acceleration to braking steering feel ride quality sound system exhaust clip all that fun stuff so having said all of that what do you guys say let's just go ahead and jump right into it and as always let's start with pricing and so as you can imagine there are several different trim levels for the 2024 durango first one being the sxt starting at 41,670, sxt plus for 43,715, gt for 44,170, gt plus for 48,170, gt premium for 52,170 and the citadel for 55,670 dollars by the way that was all pricing for the rear wheel drive configuration if you wanted to add all wheel drive you can do that simply add two thousand dollars then to any of those prices but regardless of trim level that you go with the power plant on the durango here is going to be the same powering the beast is a 3.6 liter naturally aspirated v6 putting out 295 horsepower at 6400 rpm 260 pound feet of torque coming in at 4000 rpm that power being sent to rear wheels or all wheels through an eight speed automatic with paddle shifters by the way we have so we'll be testing those out here in a little bit zero to 60 time approximately 7.5 seconds with mpg numbers coming in at 19 in the city 26 on the highway taking regular unleaded fuel and so before we do that power shifter test or acceleration test or anything like that did want to mention to you guys the drive modes there are several of them there's sport auto snow tow and custom adjusting things like the shift points and the throttle response all-wheel drive system engagement things like that so now i've got all of that out of the way let's go ahead and find a straightaway let's put the paddle shifters here to the test first and Let's see how quickly these paddle shifters are going to react for us here. And so there is a full manual shift mode here. Just slide the shifter all the way to the back and to the left. I think we're going to do the acceleration test here with this. It does show I'm in first gear. So here we go in three, two, one, go. Oh gosh, that was a quick one. I was expecting turbo lag, but there's no turbocharged engine. So that makes sense. Actually, paddle shifters were kind of impressive for an SUV. I'll put it that way. So typically with SUVs, there's just massive delays with paddle shifters. And with the Durango, they actually did pretty darn good. And the other cool thing about the paddle shifters is they feel aluminum. They don't feel plastic. So they're like a heavy duty feel, like something you would find in Porsche. So that is brilliant. Paddle shifters are done freakishly brilliant in the Durango. So I will say that as far as acceleration goes, this thing is plenty quick. You're not gonna have any issues in merging onto the highway. If you want it quicker, there are V8 options actually. We're not reviewing any of those V8, V8 options today if I could talk, but still they are available if you wanted them. But having said that, the V6, plenty of an acceleration here in this thing. But anyways, to go along with that acceleration, as always, braking is equally important. And so up front, you will find 13.8 inch ventilated front discs. In the back, 13 inch solid rear discs. As far as that braking feel goes, it's on the firm side. Love it. Keep crushing it, Dodge. You're doing good. So typically with SUVs, especially three row SUVs, there's a massive soft braking feel. It's just like, it's boring. But this thing is fun to drive so far. Credible acceleration, great paddle shifters, great braking. All right, let's continue. Touching on suspension and handling. Up front, you're gonna get a short and long arm front suspension. In the back, independent multi-link rear suspension. As far as ride quality goes, in my short little test drive here today, it's been perfectly fine. I have absolutely no issues whatsoever with the ride quality. Definitely absorbing Pennsylvania's road of perfections quite nicely. As far as steering feel goes, it's on the looser side of things. So. I will say that it's not the heaviest steering feel in the world. I was kind of expecting it to be a little bit heavier than what it is, just because everything else, as far as performance goes, has been absolutely amazing. But as far as the steering feel goes, it feels like every other three row SUV out there. It's on the looser side of things. So I'll just put it that way. As far as cabin noise goes, we're going, uh, I don't know, 30 miles per hour right now. I'll let you guys be the judge of that through my road mic. It's okay. I don't have any issues with that personally. Touching on uh, rear visibility, there is a massive rear window back there. So 100%, I personally don't have any issues there either. I did want to mention though, in addition to that, if you were to go with that Citadel trim level, there is also rain sensing windshield wipers that do come standard with the Citadel only. So it detects any kind of mist or rainfall like we're just about to start getting here. So it's going to automatically turn on those windshield wipers. So just one less thing you got to worry about, kind of like automatic headlights, but 
That pretty much rounds out the performance segment of this review, you guys. Let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of our brand new 2024 Dodge Durango. All right, so here she is, you guys. The new 2024 Dodge Durango finished in Frostbite Pearl. Such a cool name for an exterior color option. But anyways, that's what you guys are looking at. I love this color on this particular Durango. I love the hood scoop there too. But anyways, getting ahead of myself, starting with where this one is made, taking a look at the VIN. First character is the number one, indicating that the new Durango is built and assembled here in the US, specifically Detroit, in case you were curious. But starting up front, gloss black front grille does of course come standard with gloss black or silver surrounds, depending upon the configuration that you go with. Got that Dodge badging found in the corner of that front grille, of course. To the bottom corners there, you will find front air curtains helping direct air around the wheel and tire combination for a little better aerodynamics there. You gotta love that. And of course, to the sides, LED headlights. They look so good with this exterior color. But anyways, they do come standard for every single trim level across the board and they do get the automatic feature as well so when it starts to get dark out at night headlights will turn on automatically for you so you gotta love that and let's get up a little closer here to the hood here i want to show this to you guys this is functional by the way let me show it to you this way so if you look inside of there you can actually see a little bits and parts of the engine so that is pretty darn cool it allows the v6 to breathe a little bit better so you gotta love it and it looks so darn good as well up front but anyways that pretty much rounds out the front end of the durango here let's now go ahead and make our way to the side all right so now since we are around to the side of the durango roof rails do come standard up top there you can see those finished in a gloss black rear privacy glass also of course coming standard for all trim levels across the board taking a look at the side mirrors they are body colored power adjustable side mirrors that does come standard at least but the finish to the side mirrors are going to differ a little bit depending upon the trim level that you go with you can get gloss black in some cases like we have with us here today um, also silver for the citadel in case you were curious about that but heated side mirrors do come standard for all trim levels across the board as well gotta love those body colored side skirts and fender surrounds that's something with three row suvs you traditionally don't find they're usually finished in a matte black which i personally don't like i prefer the body colored elements like you have here on the Durango. so big fan of that it makes this thing look so much better but then taking a look at the wheel setup 18 inch aluminum alloys for the sxt and sxt plus then that gets bumped up for all other trim levels to 20 inch aluminum alloys essentially for every other trim level varying a little bit in design so for example the Citadel is going to get unique aluminum alloys, so a little different design there, but overall, this thing looks dang good from the side. Let's now go ahead and swing around to the back. All right, so now since we are around to the back of this one, all the way to the top, if you guys can see it, there is a gloss black shark fin antenna. Just below that, rear spoiler with an integrated brake light. Just below that, rear window wiper. But my favorite part, these super bright LED taillights. That is absolutely amazing. So bright, definitely gonna help with the illumination at night so you're less likely to get rear-ended or something like that because they're so dang bright. But anyways, another one of my favorite parts of the Durango is the fact that they still expose the exhaust outlets because the trend right now is to tuck them away and kind of hide them like every vehicle is now electric. So I love that they still expose them. It looks so much better in my opinion. So anyways, dual exhaust outlets with chrome tips coming stated across the board. So having said that, I do believe you guys know what we have to do next here. As always, here is that exhaust clip. Alright, so now since we are around to the back of the Durango here, when it comes to opening that rear lift gate, it is going to be a power lift gate for the GT trim level and up. Otherwise, it is manual. There is a button on the key fob, but there's also a rubberized button on the lift gate itself then as well. But once opened up, cargo capacity comes in at 17.2 cubic feet, at least behind that third row, with all rows folded 85.1 cubic feet. So that's pretty right on par for the course with the Highlander and the Pilot and stuff like that. So definitely plenty of space in this three row SUV. You do have some cargo lighting in the cargo area, of course. There are some tie down anchors. There's a 12 volt power outlet back there as well uh, i saw a grocery bag hook uh, if you were to lift up underneath of that cargo floor you actually will find a decent amount of
of in-floor storage. So maybe you could put a tire inflator kit or an ice scraper or something like that. But I will say there is a spare tire that comes standard on the Durango. It's not found in the cargo area, but rather underneath the vehicle, uh, close to the exhaust and all that other stuff. So anyways, that's where you're going to find it at least. Then making our way up to the third row legroom that comes in at 33.5 inches for reference. I mean, even six feet tall. This is how much space I had in that third row there. Plenty of cup holders back there and you will find uh, rear ventilation found for all three rows. It's going to be found kind of on the roof or ceiling of the Durango. So I love that particular setup. A lot of other three row SUVs will put them by the cup holders in the third row, which doesn't make any sense to me. So I love this particular setup, but then making our way up to the second row legroom that comes in at 38.6 inches. For reference, I am still an even six feet tall. This is how much space I had in the second row there. Heated rear seats are gonna come on the Citadel. They are optional. Otherwise, we actually have them. That's pretty darn cool. So the rear passengers get spoiled a little bit there. I gotta love that. USB charging ports is actually a 115 volt power outlet in our particular configuration as well. And again, rear ventilation does come standard. There are some vents found just in front of the second row passengers there. Do wanna mention no, I kind of skipped it, but there's no third row for the SXT or SXT Plus. However, all other trim levels will get the third row. So I do want to emphasize that. And of course, you can get captain's chairs or bench seating. Either one is available for the Durango. But anyways, then making our way up to the front seats. Power adjustable driver's seat does come standard for all trim levels across the board. Cloth seating coming with the SXT, SXT Plus, and GT trims. Leather seating for the GT Plus trim level and up. Heated front seats for the GT trim level and up. Ventilated front seats for the Citadel only. And the memory settings for the Citadel only as well. It is optional. Otherwise, we actually still have the memory settings so we don't have the citadel but we have the memory settings so that's pretty darn cool overall as far as seat comfort goes it was perfectly fine in my short little test drive here today another big plus about the seats at least is the power lumbar support incredibly adjustable i always play around with the power lumbar support some of them are more adjustable than others and the durango very adjustable so well done dodge on the seat comfort but then taking a look at the steering wheel, I love this steering wheel. It is tilt and telescoping. It is power adjustable for the Citadel only, but it is leather wrapped for every trim level across the board. And the 10 and two grips are definitely on the thicker side. So I am a huge fan. This feels like a BMW M steering wheel because the grips, the bottom especially, everything is so massive. So you gotta love that. It gives the driver a better feeling of being in control, at least in my opinion. But then making our way to the startup, let me start by showing you guys the key here. You got your Dodge logo on the one side. When you flip it over, lock, unlock uh, the button to pop the rear tailgate there. The times two button, that is gonna be a remote start that comes with a GT trim level and up. So you can warm this thing up on super cold days in Pennsylvania. And uh, keyless entry with push button start is gonna come standard across the board though. So all I'm going to do here is simply put my foot on the brake and press that engine start button kind of located just by the driver's right knee there. And so once started up, this is a pretty cool looking digital gauge cluster here. You got your tachometer on your left, your fuel information on your right, and the center portion is digital. So there's a couple different things you can display up there. But if you're one of those people that doesn't like the old school speedometer setup, there is a massive full digital speedometer that you can display up there. So I thought that looked pretty good. And basically all of your information is up there. There's all kinds of vehicle information. There's trip A, trip B. There's actually towing information. There's your radio information. There's messages. There's uh, all kinds of different things. So pretty much everything you could possibly want in the digital portion of the gauges there. But now let's go ahead and make our way to overall interior quality. Power sunroof is gonna come on the Citadel. It is optional otherwise. Overhead sunglass holder does come standard as well. I like seeing that for all trim levels, by the way. Universal garage door opener for the GT trim level and up. That's actually found not on the rear view mirror, but kind of on the ceiling of this one for up to three different garage doors there. Suede headliner for the Citadel trim level only. Just in front of the shifter, we got a wireless phone charger gotta love to see that a little bit of rubberized storage just next to that several usb charging ports to the right of that shifter you got your dual cup holders and uh within the center armrest there's definitely a decent amount of storage in there you shouldn't need any more than that but overall as far as interior quality goes i kind of like the carbon fiber look although it's not carbon fiber it's plastic but it still looks good it's found on the doors just above the passenger side glove box all the red contrast stitching that definitely looks good as well chrome door handles that's definitely a nice added touch a lot of manufacturers will just leave them like a matte gray or matte black plastic so i like that the only thing i would change is the surrounding the cup holders here it's a matte gray plastic or matte black plastic and uh, i would definitely 
add kind of a cool design to that, kind of like they did with the doors there. Just that kind of patterned plastic look, I think that would look really good around the cup holders as well, or even make it texturized. That would be even better. Just not the basic black plastic. That's all I'm saying. But now let's go ahead and take a look at the infotainment screen, because this is really nice, actually. 8.4 inch color touchscreen display coming standard, Bluetooth and audio streaming, Android Auto, Apple CarPlay. Factory navigation system is gonna come on the GT Plus trim level end up. You gotta love that. You can also check out your climate control information up there. Your heated seat buttons are up there as well, along with the heated steering wheel button. That is pretty darn cool. I didn't even see that earlier. And of course, you got your radio information as well. So when it comes to the sound systems, essentially all trim levels but the Citadel will get six speakers, but the Citadel gives you nine speakers. So we do have that six speaker sound system with us here today. So what do you guys say? Let's go ahead and turn on the radio. Let's see what we got playing this morning and let's test out the clarity of this one really weird song but having said that the bass was ridiculous that, that was an incredible amount of bass in the durango there's no way that was six speakers that was that was pretty darn good clarity wasn't the very best it was good though but the bass was ridiculous so well done dodge with that sound system i absolutely loved it but last thing i want to mention to you guys on the infotainment screen at least is when you do put the durango in reverse you will find a rear view camera coming standard across the board it does take up the entire screen which i like but having said that it's probably the most low resolution rear view camera that is out there right now but it still gets the job done nonetheless either way. So anyways, that is always is going to lead us into safety. And so to start, the first thing I always like to mention, for whatever reason, this one is not an IIHS top safety pick, unfortunately, but front side side curtain airbags do come standard. In the back, you got latch, AKA lower anchors to tethers for children for the rear car seats, rear child door locks, tire pressure monitoring system, but also coming standard, a blind spot monitoring system then as well. If you were to go with the GT trim level and up, you're gonna get parking sensors. You gotta love that. And the Citadel is gonna add to that forward collision warning then as well so overall when it comes to my final thoughts here of the durango i personally love the styling i love this color too this looks so dang good and again part of the reason why i love the styling on the durango is the fact that everything is body colored on the outside like the uh, side skirts and the fender surrounds most of the time like i said it's not body colored it's finished in like a matte gray or black plastic on the outside which doesn't look anywhere near as good so well done dodge on the styling there also the paddle shifters are done incredibly well i didn't expect to find paddle shifters on a three row suv but the fact that they are as high quality as they are and they actually function appropriately too because a lot of times there's a massive delay i am definitely a big fan for that reason so that's my two positives let me give me my two room for improvements i guess you could call them now as well first off it does lack a lot of the advanced safety that a lot of the competition does give you and uh, maybe that's part of the reason why it's not an iihs top safety pick most of the competition is and this one is not so that's one thing dodge i know you can improve upon that it's definitely a big selling point for three row suvs i will say that and the other thing is i always try to check out consumer reports before i review any of these cars just to see if uh if they're rated decently as far as reliability and this one for whatever reason is not so that's according to consumer reports if you don't believe me just go ahead and pick up a consumer reports magazine at your local walmart or grocery store and see for yourself but anyways let me know what you guys think of the new durango in the comment section below but that's about it for this one you guys thank you so much for watching feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen if you want to see what's coming next on the channel before it gets to youtube be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're in any new car reviews because that's what we do here on this channel after all do appreciate you guys watching more than you know and i will see you guys all in the next video stay gold